Greetings, everybody. Uh, welcome to the piano lesson for Everybody's Lonely. Um, my name is Ben. I play in Jukebox of Ghost, and I will be giving this uh, tutorial. Now, there are two things that I highly recommend uh, for anyone interested in learning this song. One uh, is a piano. Uh, two is um, a tiny glass of coffee. Uh, I am drinking espresso today. I recommend the same, uh, unless you are a child, uh, in which case just stick to the piano. Hmm. Now, the, uh, the song is in C major. It looks like that. And the first chord is, of course, a C major chord. The intro, I will play very quickly, it goes like this. you do it. Just kidding. But it starts like this. It starts with a C major chord, and then this note changes from a C to a B flat, to a C7. Uh, then it goes to a F major, uh, and then it's going to go down, bum bum, to the F major dominant 7. Those are the first four chords. So you're going to go ba 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 Do that three times through, uh, and then the next chords... Well, no, we need to do the left hand. So the left hand comes in uh, with the right hand, which has a little chromatic thing, which I haven't mentioned yet. So the second half of the phrase each time goes. Now, that is the, the, the second finger goes to the E flat, and then I alternate with the one going down to chromatic run down. A little, it's a little saucy. Uh, you don't have to do it if you're playing the song, but it does add a nice little flavor to it. Um, so you go one, two, three, and then da, there's your chromatic. Uh, now the third time it happens, once the vocals have kicked in, uh, the left hand joins in those notes and then stays in uh, for the rest of the intro. Um, so it will go. Uh, once you hit that F, the left hand entrance also enters on an E flat, and will go. Now you can do octaves, as I do, or you can do single notes if you want to just go. Don't be afraid to do octaves and keep it simple at any point. Uh, do single notes, I mean. Um, when it's there, we're going to learn a couple of new chords. First chord, I'm going to do it blocked out, is a C, which you know, and then it goes to a E dominant. Uh, e major, uh, and then an A minor, and then your minor four chord, which is just about the greatest chord um, ever invented. In this case, that is an F minor. I'm adding a sixth in there, that little D with the second finger. You can do that if you want, but you can also go. And then, here's your sauciest chord of the intro. It is a rolled, jazzy D minor seven uh, with a nine on the top. Um, so I roll that out, that is, it's all sort of alternating white notes if you want to keep it really, really simple. Um, starting with a D in the left hand, D, F, A, C, and the right hand, F, A, C, E, just like that. And then I play along with the melody. Everything just sounds the same. And that is E, F, D, E, C, D, and then D again on that G. So. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip on, on this run. It looks enormously um, fancy, but, you know, it is. And here's how you do it. Um, in the right hand, I'm just doing a G major uh, arpeggiated triad, which means a G, a B, and a D. And I'm going... Just putting it up the octave every single time. Um, the thing is, I'm giving a little... Uh, pick up with the left hand, also arpeggiated, and those are arpeggiated similar notes, but it is an F, a G, a B, and a D. So what I'm doing is I'm going in very slow motion, and the left hand does that arpeggio, that does that arpeggio. And while that's still setting up, I've already got this hand ready to do the next one. And then it plays that same thing again. And then it uh, slowly speeds up. 
until it gets to. Um, and what I recommend is just doing that, getting used to going like that and moving the hands where they're about to be. And then you can just roll it. And you can pretty much, once you get that feel, you can do it for almost anything. Um, you can go like this, or like that, you just pile it on top of itself in any key and it's a fun little trick. Um, so there's your intro, we'll play it from the beginning. Uh, you got the C, C dominant, F, F dominant. down to the D minor. Everything just sounds the same. That's it. And now you're ready for the chorus. The chorus is much simpler. Is everyone doing okay? I recommend now taking a breath and thinking about your life and most likely um, dealing with the things that you think about by drinking out of a tiny cup. Great. Now the chorus the chords are a, a little bit simpler. Um, it starts with a C, and it's just going to move up in triads for the first four. And then it'll get a little more complicated. But uh, you've got this rolling action, too, and that's that's the part that I want to talk about. The way I play it, I don't go... It's a, It sounds like this to start. And the way I play this is actually by sort of locking my hand into, into position. It's not moving. I'm not using my fingers like this. Um, I'm, I'm holding it steady and then turning my hand like that in order to get that rolled feeling and sensation. Um, so it's going to D minor, E minor, F. Now it's just moving up in triads. You can just lock it into place. Once you get to the F, the, it moves a little quicker and does an E uh, augmented, which means it's an E, but, e chord, but the B is raised to a C. And then it's an A minor a C, and then back to everybody's favorite, D minor with that 7 on it. And that's it um, for the right hand. So we'll play the right hand once slowly. It goes C, D, to E, to F, and double time to that E augmented, A, C, and then a D minor. Now, I know that, that C looks like it isn't a C because an E is on the root, for those of you thinking about it, but it's just in an inversion. I do a lot of inversions. The left hand um, is also actually going to match that. Now, the left hand typically plays uh, whatever the, the thumb of the right hand is playing, with one exception. But it's going to go C, D, E, M, G sharp, A. in octaves when I'm playing on the piano. And it's going, it's, on, it's playing on the one and it's playing on the four. And that's how it balances out. So you get a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, That's your chorus. That's it. It's the same every single time and the post choruses. Um, so now I would practice playing that. You can play it slow. You don't have to do it roll in the beginning. I would maybe just practice it going... That's how you get it. Now, uh, we're going to go back into the second verse. Now, the, the second verse is the same uh, chordally as the first verse, but instead of doing the triplets, it's actually going to just be steady eighth notes. Now, the reason we ended up doing this is because, uh, for those of you little music nerds out there, uh, there's actually a tempo change when the chorus kicks in. Uh, the intro is slower than the rest of the song. So if we were to play the, the second verse the same tempo as um, the rest of the song, uh, in triplets it would be way too fast in a really annoying way. Um, so we did it with eighth notes, and so it's... The left hand comes in right away on that F, um, and then just plays along all the way to the end. There's only three progressions, I think, until the end. So it's C, sorry, so the start is C, Dragon, C, a dominant, do not play Searching for a piece of art. And then they're back into the chords 
then the C, the E, an A, an F minor. But now it doesn't slow down, and the G is a chord. Now that ending is G like that, and then the root stays the same, and you raise this top third up. Just... I don't think it's saucy, what I'm actually playing on the record is... But, for the sake of just playing the song, G... Walk it up. Then you're back in the chorus! Uh, let's now take a moment and think about our lives again. Drink out of your tiny cup feed your dog, whatever it is that you do uh, in times of deep reflection um, and, uh, you know, respite. Or respite. You can actually say either one. It's kind of annoying. Mm. The bridge. Uh, when we wrote the bridge, uh, Tommy likes to say we wrote it by committee, which is true. And what he means by that is, you know, a lot of times we'll write songs on our own and then uh, bring it in and, and uh, this part wasn't written, and we needed to figure out a way to write it. Um, Tommy uh, sometimes will say to me, Ben, just do some crazy chords and think about some cool progressions, and he gave this challenge to me. Uh, and so I think in the practice space, I was fooling around with a bunch of stuff, and what we arrived with is, I'll play it for you, is a lot of chromatic uh, work with a lot of inverted chords, um, and a weird little key change you end up doesn't matter. I'll, I'll play it right now, and then we'll talk it through. That's it. Total madness. Who would do that? I don't know, but we did. Um, the first chord is an F. Simple enough. You're gonna hit it twice in the left hand, and then hit the chord on the top. Now, um, the octaves in both hands are always gonna be the same. Uh, so the chords are just sort of what happens inside of it with these fingers here. That's an easy way to do it. If you want to kind of cheat this chorus, you can go... And just do it with single octaves all the way. But let me walk it through. The first chord is the F with the F major. Then you walk it up a half step to an F sharp. To an F sharp diminished. Uh, the next chord starts with a G on the root and is actually a C chord. The, the other chord is an E major uh, chord with a G sharp on the root. And then it walks up. You're back to an F again, but with a C on the root. So it's an F. And then you walk it up, keeping these notes the same. And again, you keep them the same. So an F, an F walking up to a D minor. And then, this is where it gets very exciting, you take your left hand and you throw it down on that low E flat octave. And the lowest E flat octave you can get, that's the right one. And then you shoot it back up to that D, and with the hands together go D, C, B flat, B flat. Follow so far? Let me do it slow. fit of uh, chromatic whimsy uh, as we take it up uh, with the left hand all the way up to the A minor and then walk it down. So I'll do it very slowly. So we've got an Everybody Know those chords. Everybody Now that is a G sharp on the root with an E, B, and an E here. You're making that E major chord again with that on the root. And then here the left hand is going to start at an A, and then hit a G, and then it's all steps, half steps, all the way down from there. 
So you got the A minor. Now you're going to hold these top notes. These top notes and then follow the left hand with the thumb here. And then I need that D minor chord again. Um, so that's A. Then once you get down to the G, don't even think about it. Just go whatever, whatever the next note is all the way down. So G, F sharp, F, E, D e sharp, D. That's it. And then you roll out that D minor chord in the seven. And they're in the chorus. Maybe the chorus all the way to the end. And that's it. And when I say that's it, I then think, there are so many chords in this song. Some artists write songs with three chords, and those are great songs. And I've never really been able to do that. But this is a song with lots of chords, and I hope you like it. Happy learning! Happy coffee!